Chris and Matt, great to see you guys. Thank you. Good Man, this you. is great to get both of you guys in the same space. You never know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So this is great. That's right. And uh, man, we're actually listening to Christmas music. You know, it's summer in Nashville, but we're, we're getting ready. And uh, I'm excited about it already because, Chris, there's some great new songs on your new record coming up. And uh, this particular song is, I mean, honestly, just unbelievable. I mean, we, I was there the night they recorded uh, the record, and I think we had a couple hundred worship leaders in the room. And when, we, when they started singing in the chorus, I mean, the place, I think the roof just kind of lifted a little bit there. Um, and this is interesting. We were just talking about this uh, because the verses of this song are based on this old hymn, In the Bleak Midwinter. <laughs> yes. And we're going to credit you, Matt, with <laughs> <laughs> pulling this out Brushing of Brushing the, the dust off of <laughs> yeah. yeah. But y'all talk about... Um, where the song started and how it ended up kind of in the form that it is now. Yeah, it was a, um, it was a few years ago that um, Matt and I were just sitting down to write some songs and we were just kind of bringing different ideas together. And, um, and this, uh, we thought, man, I was, I was talking about Christmas and the Christmas idea of songs and we were, we were talking about Handel's Messiah. And what would it be like to like bring something um, kind of like in the modern style of music with that lyric and that idea, you know, he shall reign forevermore, king of kings, lord of lords, you know, for unto us a child, all those, all those amazing things. And, and Matt and I thought we could improve the hand of the side. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, 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 you know, be honest. And, uh, yeah, and I'm just kidding, obviously. Um, obviously one of the greatest pieces of music ever to ever be written. And, but I thought, man, I've never heard that song, just those, that, that idea, the, um, just some of those things. And so we sit down with this chorus a, a few years ago, the, the chorus you hear, He shall reign forevermore. That was like the, that's what we had. And, but it just didn't go anywhere. It didn't mm -hmm. go anywhere. And so when we were kind of thinking about this record, um, Matt and I talked and he brought up this, man, what about that chorus, you know? And I was like, yeah, I still love that. Let's go back to that and see if there's something else. And then, and then he calls me out of the blue one day and he's like, Okay, you're gonna think I'm crazy, but there's this old old song in the bleak midwinter, and I was like, in the bleak midwinter. <laughs> so you, you take it. Well, I mean, I, 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 it'd been a couple months since we chatted. You yeah. know, we're just both busy, both touring and, and making yeah. music and stuff. But I, for I, I remembered that Chris was getting ready to do a Christmas album, and and so just sat down and was kind of thinking back on you know one of the things I loved about the, getting to play music in college was you know singing a lot of choirs. And did a lot of choral music, and I remembered was thinking back to all the different kind of settings of choral music, you know. But it's very, you know, like you're reading parts. Yeah. And, <laughs> right. um, it sounds beautiful, but the one that I remembered, the lyric that I remembered was this hymn, and the opening line was "In the bleak midwinter," which I just thought it's so stark. Mm. But I thought, man, that's a really powerful way to start a worship song. Just when you're talking about Jesus being born, what was the condition? of his birth, but we're really, we're talking about what's the human condition, you know what I mean? So, so I went and pulled up those lyrics. Turns out that was actually a poem written by an English poet named Christina Rossetti. It was like before 1872 and it had been set a couple of different times, like a couple of different people took turns trying to put music to it. And so it's sort of this audacious thing of like, yeah, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. <laughs> so it really was a thing of like sat down, started playing and a melody just kind of pops out and it's always the thing of when I when I write with Chris you know that it the the music part seems to be a bit effortless once you kind of get your head around what it is that you're you're kind of going for and so then we just started emailing back I emailed back the song ideas and I think originally I'd even attached a different it was a different chorus that was still the same mm -hmm. king of kings and lords lords and then we we're like man why don't we just go back to this thing that we had originally had and kind of looked at it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and oh, there you go. And I think in some ways too, like we even tried to tip our hat to Handel's Messiah, because mm -hmm. the opening line is like that, and he shall reign, or, and he shall reign for ever and ever. Yeah. And um, and so we kind of like in a small way just kept that, and he shall reign, you know. And then we kind of changed it, mm -hmm. but just in some ways, I think to kind of once again tip your hat to the people, those who've gone before you. Mm -hmm. Because the great legacy of music it is, is all these amazing people, but they wrote songs for the church too, as well mm -hmm. as all the other stuff they did, and yeah. we're kind of trying to live in that same space, you yeah. know, in a way. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, man, you guys play it for us. I think what's cool about this too, one 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 little extra thing is on the on the record, Matt was supposed to sing this with me. <laughs> so we were getting it done today. This is this is the this was in my mind the original what I was gonna be. So when you hear it's just me, and the, the Matt and I wrote this together, and um, you know right before the day of the recording. Uh, he calls me and he's like, I, I can't even get out of bed, so sick. I mean, just like, and we're doing a live recording. So it kind of needs to be there live. And uh, it just, it's, it, it was kind of a bummer, but, um, but it's really cool to be able to do this today and play this together. So an exclusive new this song cafe exclusive. performance. This is the world premiere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So many great things there. Uh, we don't have time to talk about all the cool things that are that are brought out in that. Just arrangement-wise, some killer things happening. That chorus when it stays just on the one and, and you know and builds up and then explodes out of that. It's just so powerful. 
Matt, I think we're going to teach this from the keys, yeah. uh, which is great. So you guys are in B flat. Yes. So kind of walk us through. You're kind of following a lot of the melody, and you're—I mean, obviously you're a killer player. Um, but kind of break it down simplistically. You know, overall, it's it's probably four chords, five chords. Yeah, it's not—it's not a difficult song. Um, you know, basically the verse is just um, like you know six four one five. So mm -hmm. G minor, E flat, B flat, F, and. Um, basically, you know, a big thing when you're playing these verses is just, you just kind of want to get out of the way of the melody. And so I'm just doing a lot of what they call diamonds or just downbeats. So just... And then the pre-chorus is like a, a C minor, which is a 2 minor, up to a 4. And then a two, 6 to a 5. And then the chorus is just G minor, E flat. F. It just kind of does that, um, you know, four times. And, you know, it's kind of what you were saying where um, the bridge is the same chords too. Mm. Um, the, the, the third chorus, what we do is we kind of, you substitute out the, the minor chord for the relative major chord. So instead of a G minor chord, we go to a B flat. So it's, he shall reign, and that's like four over one, yeah. to a, back to a one, and then a five over two, so an F over C, and then one over three to a four to a one over five to a five. You know, it's kind of almost hymn-like in a way, but then we go right back to the other chords, you know? So it's uh, the G minor, the E flat, B flat, and F. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's just kind of trying to find that one little thing that kind of like, you know, sets it apart. But it really is like, the, the great thing about, I feel like about this song is that it's really about the lyric. You know, it's taking what a, a poet wrote so many hundreds of years ago and just finding a new way to kind of wrap a little bit of a modern shell around it and then also referencing one of the greatest pieces of music ever written didn't, yeah. didn't yeah. hurt. Right. And, and, and allowing worship leaders to bring a bit of church history back into a contemporary worship setting. That's what I feel like is, is so valuable with these songs mm -hmm. is that you're able to connect with 200 years worth of church history mm -hmm. all of a sudden in a way that's relevant to your congregation. So yeah. cool. Guys, thanks so much for coming by and playing it. Absolutely. We got the exclusive Chris Tom and Matt Marr duet. World premiere. Right here. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank you.